Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Korea. Today we're going to be talking about how to escape the sewers and inside the back rooms. Uh, the sewers are the brand new level that just came out for inside the back rooms and it's a very difficult level to complete, especially if you are solo, but I'm going to show you how to do it today from start to finish and uh, hopefully you will be able to complete it as well. It is definitely difficult, but I love a challenge and I absolutely love this game. So if you haven't already hit the like button, subscribe if you're new here and if you ever have any questions make sure to drop them in the comments or to uh, come find me in my discord which is linked below uh, i do also stream inside the back rooms quite regularly over on twitch which is also linked in the description of the video so make sure you go check that out and uh, come follow me over there and then that way you can come hang out when i am live with inside the back rooms so that being said i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to do the sewers of uh, whether you want to do it solo or with a group, uh, you will be able to complete it yourself. And uh, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. So the very first thing that you need to do in order to get into the sewers is to complete the party room. Now, what you need to do is get the key card and then you will essentially just go back into the parking garage. Uh, it's not too difficult. You'll just run over to the grate and then hop down into the into the garage uh, to which you will be able to find the sewer entrance. Now, uh, you do need to be careful because uh, Meat Man is in the garage, uh, so just make sure you keep an eye out for him. Once you find the red door that goes down into the sewers, you'll just follow the path. There's nothing that spawns there. And then you'll get into this room. Now, this room is also where you can store up on water and on uh, anxiety pills. And uh, yeah, you'll basically just open the door. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do uh, when you come in here is just be very careful because there's basically two different creatures that spawn in this area, you have uh, sewer rats and then you have the little water hand creatures. Um, and yeah, you do need to be careful. The rats are aggro to sound. Uh, so you do need to be quiet when they are nearby. The hand creatures crawl through the water and they aren't aggroed to you. They just kind of follow a set path. If they touch you, they'll kill you. It's pretty simple. Now, what I always do is I come over to this area first. Uh, it's basically straight ahead and then down to the right. And uh, what you want to do is start checking bodies. Bodies are going to have keys. And there are two keys that you can find on the bodies that you're going to need. One will unlock this room here, which is uh, the room that you can, uh, first of all, get moth jellies. But you also get a bucket and oil cans from. And you have to uh, do an electrical puzzle. Now, the second room is around the corner, and this one is what I call the moth jelly room. It is uh, another one that's really important uh, and has a door that you need to unlock in it. Uh, the door is where you will take those oil cans after you fill them with oil. And then you will put them in there. We'll get to that. We're not there yet. Uh, so again, like I said, this is the moth jelly room, but there's also a special code on the body in the back. This code right here uh, is a four digit code and it's super important for one of the steps. After you leave this room, I strongly encourage you to follow this the path and check all of the bodies for a key. Uh, I found that they tend to spawn in the darker areas, but not always. Uh, essentially, you just need to go up and down these little tunnels looking for bodies and just checking all of them for keys. Now, at first I thought that they always spawn in the same places, but that's not the case. They definitely do spawn on different bodies in different places. So you will have to run around pretty much the entire map looking for these bodies and these keys. It's a little bit frustrating for sure. However, there is actually a way to kind of get around this uh, that's a little bit easier, and that is by getting the metal detector early on. So if you do get the metal detector early on, then you will be able to use that. It does apparently detect the keys. I have not used it, but a friend of mine did. Now, uh, eventually you'll find a body that has uh, a code on it, and these three numbers are what the angles are for levers later on. Keep in mind that there are a lot of codes and a lot of things to do. The next thing you'll do is come to the prison room. Uh, actually, the prison room can be done at any point uh, until you really have uh, the keys and stuff. You can't really do anything with this room. Uh, but what you can do is go ahead and open up the gates. And honestly, you just have to run through and just press the levers until you can get to uh, the main gate, which you have to use your pliers to unlock. So if for some reason you do start from the very beginning of uh, inside the back rooms and you don't just start from the 
the computer rooms, uh, make sure you hold on to two very important things. One of them is going to be the pliers, and then the other one is going to be the rad suit because there is a room that it does have radiation. So you do need to be careful and hold on to that. So basically what I do in this area is I just run around and try to um, flip all of the switches. And as you can see, it's definitely quite a lot and it does take a little bit of time. I'm not 100% certain about which ones open which, but uh, yeah, as long as you kind of just play around with them for quite a while, it'll work. Um, and eventually you'll, you'll get to the point that you need. <laughs> As you can see, I get a little bit stuck sometimes, but, uh, yeah, this is just a, a very time consuming part of the, the thing. And once you get down to this, the back hallway, uh, it's a little bit easier, a lot closer to the end because the door that you need to open is back here and you'll actually know which one that is because it makes a, a much softer sound than the other, uh, the other levers so i believe it's going to be one of the ones along the inside area it just makes a softer sound i that's the one that opens up the the door that you need to get to the actual uh, the actual gate where you use the pliers on. All right, so now once you get to the, the door, you're all you're gonna do is interact with it, use the pliers, and there you go, the door is open. Uh, something important to note here is you can run through here, there is a back door that you can open, but you can't really do the rest of the stuff in here yet until you get the keys for the room, uh, the very first room that I showed you, because that room is where you will turn off a spike floor. Uh, there's a spike floor in here where the next kind of like puzzle is, but like I said, you can't get to it until you open that door. And as you can see, I am still hunting for keys. Uh, the key hunt was quite difficult and I definitely did not have a good time. So again, you just really need to check all the bodies that you can, uh, and eventually you will find two separate keys. Uh, and also there are some codes. Now this body all the way back here has the code for the left sewer exit. There is a left sewer exit and a right sewer exit code. This is the left sewer exit. Make sure you write it down. This is how you are going to be getting out. Now, as you can see, that's what a key looks like. I've never found one this far back. This was like pretty much the far reaches of the map. And then I also found the other key. I, sadly enough, I actually had walked past it. Uh, and then now you can open both of the doors. The first door that you're going to want to open though is going to be uh, the one all the way at the very beginning, not the moth jelly room door because uh, you can't really do anything in the moth jelly room until you have the oil cans. So once you've opened up both doors uh, and you have the codes that you need, you can come to the very first one and you will essentially put in the code onto the electrical box. Now here, unfortunately, I did not yet have the code for the uh, electrical box. So after I got the pail and the two oil cans, because as a solo player, you can only hold two, but you are going to need three. So if you are playing solo, you will have to go twice to this oil room, but essentially you go to this oil room and it is radiated. So make sure you put on a rad suit. Otherwise you will die. I definitely died uh, not knowing that. And what you need to do in here, there are two hand creatures, but there are oil bins everywhere and the oil bins uh, have oil inside of them. Well, only one of them has oil inside of it. The rest are empty. And the way that you find out if they are empty or if they have oil in them is to interact with them and then you basically bang on them. These creatures are not attracted by sound, so it's actually kind of, it's, it's relatively safe. You just need to keep an eye on where they are. Uh, and just make sure that you're wearing your rad suit. Now, uh, once you kind of check all of them, eventually you will find the one that has oil in it. I got very unlucky and it took me all the way, literally until the end. I checked every single oil drum in here and finally the last one actually had oil in it. You'll go ahead and interact with it and that's how you're going to fill up those oil uh, cans with the oil that you need. Again, you can only have two, so you will have to make a second trip in here with a third one in order to to fill up uh, 
the, the puzzle that you need to do. All right, so once you have your oil, you can actually go back to uh, the room, uh, the moth jelly room, and what you'll do is you'll just go up to these little pipes in the ground and fill them up with oil. And what happens is these uh, hand creatures don't like oil, apparently, and they fly to the ceiling. It's very disturbing. Uh, but again, there are three of them, so you do need three different things of oil in order to um, make all of them go up onto the ceiling. So the room I'm going to show you next is probably one of the most important rooms in Inside the Backroom Sewers. Uh, and this is because it has three separate things that we need for the sewers level. Uh, once you walk in, though, you'll notice that there's nothing in there. It looks nice and empty and peaceful. Yeah, that's not really the case. Once you go in, uh, three hand creatures will fall from the ceiling. Uh, there will be a locker immediately to the left and a body at the back. I strongly encourage you to just use your cell phone and take a picture of the code. This code right here is the one that you need in order to uh, do the switches in the very first locked room. And then uh, also where we got the oil cans and the pail. And you will also need that four digit code from the moth jelly room in order to open up the locker to get the metal detector. Silly me did not notice that the glowing lever was actually right there next to me. And I definitely missed it. Um, hindsight is 2020 when you were going back and editing stuff. But uh, in this room, you will be looking for that golden shine. The, the shine is actually a lever that you will need for later on. Uh, and it is located here. It does spawn in random places and different places, so you do need to be careful when you are looking for it. Uh, also, don't get touched by any of the hands because they will kill you. It is an insta-death. Um, so just make sure that you kind of look around. Uh, don't be like me. Pay attention for that glow. It can literally be anywhere in there. Uh, but you just have to get like a good angle on it and it doesn't always glow as you saw before it kind of turned off and Then just be careful not to get yourself stuck in a corner like like I have all right So once you find the lever you can leave that room and never look back because yeah, that room is not a fun place uh, So now that you have the uh, code for the power you can go back to the very first room and all you'll do is connect the Wires to their matching ones. So there's green white pink and yellow and you have to match them to the letter and number combination that is uh on the code now what this does is this stops the spikes in the prison room uh so you'll have to go back to the prison maze and uh once you get through there you can actually just easily go in and uh, go the next part uh, one of the issues with using the metal detector is when it beeps, it does aggro the rats. So you do need to be careful. And the reason for the metal detector is to find two medallions in the water. There are three medallions total. Two of them are located in the water and one of them is located on a body that you have to get access to. Uh, we'll get there in a second. All right. Now, um... If you can find the medallions, great. I kind of, I look for them here and there, but uh, I decided to just go ahead straight back to the prison room. And now, as you can see, the spikes aren't moving, but when that the, the electrical code has not been put in, uh, they will be going off and they will hurt you and kill you. So uh, there's also a box with moth jellies in here, which is super convenient. Make sure you grab those. And then you get to this puzzle right here. I hate this puzzle. I'm horrible at these. Uh, if you are also as bad as I am, all you need to do is just kind of go around like crazy and eventually you'll get to where you need it to go. Uh, as you can see, I, I kind of skipped through a lot of it. Um, it's it's not my favorite thing to do. But once that's done, uh, then a special door will open up. There you go. You can press the button and you come out here and uh, this is where you can find that third medallion that I said was on a body. Uh, so you'll go and grab that and that is your third medallion. You do need to find the other two which are located in the water which you use the metal detector for. So you do need to be careful when you are trying to metal detect for the medallions. They will uh, kind of beep and then you have to get right on top of them to where it's beeping very loudly. And then uh, you'll need to turn on your flashlight and try and find them in the water. You'll just kind of see this little gold thing. 
And uh, yeah, that's how you find the two that are in the water. So once you've completed the prison room puzzle, essentially what that does is it turns off the grinders in the grinder room, which is a room we haven't been to yet, but it is also another important room. Uh, now, what you need to do is you need to look for the, um, the statue in the center. That's going to have the three medallion pictures in the order that they go, first, second, and third. Uh, so once you find all three of those, then uh, you will have the complete code for so once you find all three medallions you're going to go back to the moth jelly room to where you put in the oil and you're going to essentially put those medallions in order of what they were on the statue first second and third so now that you have put in all three of the medallions something has changed back in the grinder room so yes you do have to go back to the grinder room and this is where you're going to get the gear um as you can see the statue has disappeared and the gear is now actually on the statue pedestal so you'll grab that so the next place you're going to go is this long hallway here which which is uh, actually got a very un unhappy friend hanging out in it. It's pretty easy to get past him. Uh, this room here is uh, what we call the gear room. This is where you will use the gear in the lever in order to open up some doors. So the gear is going to uh, go, I think it's in the second one. Uh, you have to put that on and then you'll also use the lever. There you go. So once you have the gear and the lever, you have to think back to that three digit code kind of thing that had uh, different angles on it. And honestly, it's quite difficult to do solo. My best advice is if you are playing with a group of people, you have them looking at the weights on the left and the right, because the left and right weights uh, have to lower onto these uh, plates in order to open the doors uh, and they'll turn green when they are ready. Uh, you do need to kind of just keep an eye on it. It is quite difficult, as I said, to do solo. Uh, my best advice is to just kind of play around with it uh, until you see them getting very low on both sides. And I'll kind of show that to you as well so you can see it a little bit. So if you look to the left and to the right, you can kind of adjust them accordingly. The code does change every single time. So it's not the same shape. It's not the same locations. Uh, and essentially what will happen is after you turn these around for quite a bit, then you will get kicked out. And that is when the code is complete and both have landed on the plates. And uh, yeah, this part is just honestly quite hard. So once you finish doing the gears, uh, there's the next thing is very important. There's three parts to this. One, there is is a key that you need to pick up. Uh, two, you will need to go around with a pail and collect the meat from each of the rooms. There are six rooms, so you can get six piles of meat. And then the third is to check for the code. There is a piece of paper that has a code on it. This is the right exit code. All right, this code right here is super duper important because if you don't have it, you ain't getting out of here. All right, you're gonna die. Now, finally, the moment you've all been waiting for is the exit to the sewers and the codes to get out. What you need to do is go back near the grinder room. Around the corner from the grinder is a door. Inside this door are a bunch of rat babies. And the way to get through here is to just drop the meat from the pail on the ground and they go and eat it. The nice thing about these rat babies is if they do hit you, they are not insta-kills, they just do damage. So you can actually survive if you get hit. You're gonna run to the back right corner and just be very, very careful that none are following you. And you'll see a room with some boxes and a giant rat at the back. My best advice here is don't run into this room, crouch. Don't make noise because rat will murder you, as we found out, uh, not in this video, but over on Twitch when we did this the first time. Now, the person with the codes is going to need to go up to the left and to the right. There are two more electrical boxes that you will have to do a code for. So this is again where we got the code for the left sewer exit and the right sewer exit. So all you'll do is just the same thing as the previous one and connect them to where they need to go. You'll hit the button, it'll turn green. Now, I'm not certain if you can go around the front of the rat. I haven't tried this yet, but I always just go around the back of the rat. I feel like the, the front is a little bit too close for my comfort. 
All right, so you go around the back of the rat in order to put in the second code, which is on the right side, which is the right sewer exit code. And it's just the same as with the left side and the previous code, you match the colors, colored wires to where they go. All right, so now once you've finished doing that, you'll hear kind of like a buzzer go off. That means the uh, exit is free for you to go out. Uh, you do lose your sanity in here because of the rat. Uh, and rat is actually easy eating a doggo body um, from back up in, in the back rooms area, the dark rooms. So once you get out here, it's pretty much safe to take your pills uh, and make sure you have your bucket back out because depending on how long it took you to do that, uh, the little rats may be done eating. If it didn't take you very long, you can just run straight to the door and up the ladder. And that, my friends, is how you get through the sewers. And this is how you escape the sewers. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're new here, and go find me over on Twitch if you would like to catch some Inside the Backrooms live. I do appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next one.